Hello and welcome everybody to another Murders at Karlov Manor draft. I'm Paul Chion and we only have a few days left. We're currently ranked number two and the grind continues. Let's hope we can string together. I'm going to say probably four or five good drafts at least in a row before I can probably try to get close to rank one. I know Eakin is sitting currently atop the throne, but let's give it a shot here. Now, before this draft fires, if you've enjoyed this content, I did launch my Patreon channel. The link is in the description below if you wanted to support the channel in another way. Shout out to all the current patrons. Thank you so much for your support. And let's open something amazing. I, I mean, I just, I, I feel like it's time. Aurelia's Vindicator. Izoni. Blood spatter analysis. Not quite where we want it to be. So... You've heard me talk about not wanting to necessarily start black and certainly don't want to start out the draft taking a gold card here. Blood Spatter Analysis is a good card if you are in black red, right? Two mana to deal three damage and then have it give you value in the late game is pretty nice, but not something I'm interested in here. Don't, the, the best card in this pack here is Inside Source by a pretty wide margin. Other cards to consider here would be something like a Fester Leech, Gadget Technician, maybe the Land, and also V2 Gazi Inspector. But I think these four are enough worse than Inside Source, where I'd rather just take the Inside Source and see where things land. Uh, the flexible pick here would be to take something like a Gadget Technician. But like I said before, this card is just significantly better to the point where I'm willing to take a little bit of a shot here on the Inside Source, on the off chance that white happens to be open. And then moving on to this pack, a rare is missing out of the pack. Uh, and this is a good pack. We have Perimeter Enforcer, Person of Interest, and Galvanize as the three cards that really stand out to me. Uh, Escape Tunnel, if you want to, if you like taking these lands early, is fine. But I think for me, it's between those three cards. Given that I first picked Inside Source, I think I'm going to take Perimeter Enforcer. You know how much I value the two drops in general. And honestly, uh, between the red cards, I might even take the Person of Interest over the Galvanize. I just think this card is that good. Starting out with Inside Source plus Person of Interest is quite nice, but by taking the Perimeter Enforcer, we get to cut off white. There's going to be two red cards here, and that gives us a little more flexibility in choosing what our second color could be. You know, let's say we go black, white, green, white, what have you, but yeah, going to take the Perimeter Enforcer here. Also goes well with our first pick in the Inside Source here, because it does create a detective, and let's move on. Moving on to this pack, uh, definitely a much weaker pack than what we saw in the previous pack. There were a couple of good red cards there. Here we have Museum Nightwatch on the job, locks it on Eavesdropper as potential cards here. Crime Stopper Sprite's okay, but definitely not something that makes me want to go into blue-white. I only really want to go into blue-white if I get one of the signpost uncommons. So it's Crime Stopper Sprite's not going to be the card that sways me in that direction. So for me, it's either taking something like a Museum Nightwatch that will likely make this deck, or delve into green with the eavesdropper. I think I'm just going to take the night watch here just to stay a little bit flexible. Although I do like the eavesdropper. It does make a detective, which is a thing. Um, it's it, This is definitely the weaker pick out of that pack. I could have taken the eavesdropper, absolutely. But this is just me doing my due diligence <laughs> uh, to cut off white as much as I can just because we know how in demand white is. Here I'm going to slam Greenbelt Radical. This card is a fantastic uncommon. Uh, we saw that Loxodon in the last pack. This is excellent. I do like green-white as a color combination. I don't really like Not On My Watch very much. I think it's playable, but it only is great in certain decks. I mean, it's a, it's a fine card if you need an interaction, but I think Greenbelt Radical is enough better. Quesadar Burning Masks is okay, but Double Red I don't like too much. I do like Granite Witness as a card, and it would be pretty decent here, but I think Greenbelt Radical is enough better where I'm willing to take a shot here at Greenbelt Radical fourth pick, just in case green does happen to be open. Um, moving on here, this is a pack with literally no playable cards other than Evidence Examiner. Uh, there's no other green cards, there's a Snarling Gorehound, there's a Reasonable Doubt, there's a Persuasive Interrogators, but I don't know, I didn't see any black, right? I didn't see any Murders or Extract the Confessions or Slice from the Shadows, so uh, I'm just going to leave black alone in this draft. I'm going to just take uh, Evidence Examiner in case somehow we need to make this crazy pivot into blue-green here given that we did see that Loxodon as well. And now there's another Loxodon, so we'll see where this goes. White might be getting pretty cut here, as is normally the case. We're not seeing a lot of red either. It looks like the Mardu colors we're not seeing a lot of, although that is a late Unscrupulous Agent, but going to take a Loxodon Eavesdropper here and continue taking the green cards. That's being passed our direction. 
And now we have an interesting pack. We have Case of the Locked Hot House versus Crowd Control Warden. There's also an out cold in this pack, but um, I think I'd still rather lean towards being green white if possible. Um, and if that's the case, which one do I like more? You know, this, if I was on another account and not trying to hit rank one, I would take Case of the Locked Hot, 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 hot House. But if I'm going to be green white, if I'm going to be green white, I think the Crowd Control Warden will be quite good. Here I'll take out cold just in case we do have to go into blue green. There's a bubble smuggler. Maybe, maybe blue green is where we need to be. If blue green was where we needed to be, uh, just because I don't like Rift Not Tracker at all and don't want to play to my decks, then Case of the Locked Hot House could have been the better pick there. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to take Fanatical Strength. Wow, look at all these combat tricks. I do like Fanatical Strength actually more than Auspicious Arrival, especially if I want to be aggressive. It looks like green is pretty open, so I'll take it here. And are we swapping over to blue green here? It could be. Oh, wait, Granite Witness with two cards left? Okay, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. I need to make sense of this draft. We have three white cards, a blue green card, a green white. Yeah, what what is what is going on here? We're just all the colors? Is that what's happening here? I guess we'll let we'll we'll tread carefully and let the packs help us decide where we need to go. I think the most likely thing is green white. But we could be no, we could be blue green as well. Oh man, my brain. Here, here's the problem though. Look at you're looking at this pack. The best card is makeshift binding by a lot, right? There's escape tunnel. There's V2 Gazi Inspector. I think I just take the makeshift binding here, and uh, maybe maybe we'll find white in this pack. All right, there's a novice inspector. There's a novice inspector. There's also surveillance monitor. I think blue and green cards were also kind of open, but hey, we got the granite witness late. We'll see what happens here. Green definitely, at least aggressive green cards felt somewhat open. And like I said, in green-white, I do really like Crowd Control Warden because if you can play this face up in green-white, I do think the card is quite strong because in a lot of instances, it's a 5-mana 6-6. Six, six. That's just a really great body, right? So let's take this here. And tr once again, tre tread carefully. Yeah, uh, Crowd Control Warden in white-green has a 61.8% win rate. That is very, very high. All right, I'm going to just move these blue cards out, okay? That'll give me a little more peace of mind, and it will let me process what we're trying to do here. And this is the deck so far. So got, some, got, some, uh, got a nice little curve going here with a couple of good spells. I'm going to take Market Watch Phantom over Loxodon Eavesdropper. I do like the value that you get from the Eavesdropper, but this is a detective for... The, oh, actually, they're both detectives, but it's a two-drop. We only have one, two at the moment, so happy enough taking Market Watch Phantom there. Now we're going to take Nervous Gardener just to take another 2-drop. Now, Nervous Gardener I like a little more um, in kind of decks that are looking to go a little bit longer. But look, the floor is this is still a 2-drop, and, and this still gets me lands where I can, I can still use those lands for the Greenbelt Radical and gives me outs to potentially splash if I really needed to, right? These are the blue cards that I'm not taking. There's no other white card that I really want. I do like Granite Witness, but I think I prefer the Nervous Gardener out of this pack. Just to uh, make sure that we have our curve covered here. I do like the way that our curve looks right now. Here, not going to take Aftermath Analyst. I do think there are decks that this could have a home in. Uh, but I haven't drafted. I don't like drafting those decks in general. So I am biased against this card. I just generally don't like this card very much in general. Uh, I'm going to take Crowd Control Warden here though. Very nice with the current suite of cards that we have. We're going to take another uh, Nervous Gardener here over on the job. Green White doesn't go wide as much. If I had... Um, a killer among us, or maybe a bunch of inside sources and dog walkers I could consider on the job. But in green white, I prefer fanatical strength and auspicious arrival as my combat tricks. And I also just prefer taking all the two drops. All right, moving on here, there is just another two drop. Again, this is not quite as good in green white, but I'll still take it. And I'm happy with this curve, right? You still just want to play a bunch of creatures early and then. Uh, fin uh, you can finish off the game with a crowd control warden and an 8th pick bite down on crime is an absolute gift. We need interaction, we need removal, we need pump spells, we just need, I mean this is just the perfect card for what we have laid out so far. So really, really loving our current setup. This actually might not be a uh, uh, B2 Gazi Inspector deck. Wow, Surveillance Monitor tabled. That's wild. And the Eavesdropper tabled. Oh my goodness. I mean we could have been blue-green. But I just think we have too many decent white cards here where I think we should probably just settle in on green-white. But 
Yeah, look, I mean, look at these cards too. The thing is, we could end up with a decent deck with blue, green, or green, white, right? It doesn't matter which direction we go. And we have the unicorn. So every time we think maybe we should consider blue, this is a great pack, by the way. There's a sur another surveillance monitor, a torch to witness, inside source, but neighborhood guardian, one of the best twos in the format. Any opener where you start with the neighborhood guardian is just so, so strong. Uh, it just puts so much pressure on your opponent that I'm going to take it here. I am sad that I have to pass inside source, but all right. Let's 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 make the executive decision here now. Oh, of course, of course we get in. Can we be blue white? That's an intrude on the mine. Oh man, no green felt somewhat open. I know, I know, I know. You're looking at this draft and you're going, Paul, 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 Paul. All right, here. I don't think this is the best on the job deck, but we do have a pretty nice curve, a bunch of twos and a novice inspector. And I could, I'm in the market for some extra spells. So I'll take an on the job here, even though it's a very early on the job. And I think crowd control warden is very good. But I think this is just kind of a, this is what this deck needs. It just needs another good combat trick. So I'm happy enough taking on the job here. Now we have the question between hard hitting question and fuss bother. And that's actually interesting because this deck doesn't really go wide. So what's better between the two? I think I'm going to take Fuss Bother. If you're a white, I feel like you just take this card. Because not only is the plus one, plus one counter on each attacking creature you control good. I mean, we took the Nanja job for, the for a reason. I do like hard-hitting question. But in the late game, you can also make three one ones, Which I think is also very, very strong. So let's go ahead and take that. And move on. Wow, these packs. I mean, it's just... Just bant. Lost in the Maze is incredible. Absolutely incredible, but I think we just take Vengeful Creeper for our deck. I do always like having one copy of this card in my decks, so happy enough having it here. And uh, I'm just going to just ignore the blue cards at this point. This is the point in the draft where you could kind of you could kind of own yourself in a way where you're just like, okay, well, I see these blue cards. Maybe I should switch. Maybe I should switch. Can I switch now? Maybe now is the time to switch. And I think you just if you just hold the course... Um, Maybe the floor, the, the ceiling is a little bit lower, but I think you, I can still end up with a good deck. This is an awesome dog walker deck. We got the on the job, we have the fuss, and we do have the green belt radical here. So gonna take dog walker here over surveillance monitor. Get a leg up is amazing in this deck. Love get a leg up here. All right, so our combat tricks are awesome. Oh, and a Sumala Sentry! Okay, all right, now you cannot be mad that I passed that loss in the garden, okay? Our green-white deck is still amazing. Sumala Sentry, especially with Dervis, uh, Dervis. Double Nervous Gardener is awesome. Really happy to pick this up. And, oh, and a bite down on Crime 8th pick. Oh my gosh, okay. Yeah, I don't know what people are drafting. Somehow everybody is drafting Rakdos or something. I don't know. I don't know, I really don't know. There's no real reason to splash. I do like Crowd Control Warden. I, I, I just, I really like Crowd Control Warden. I might just play all of them, honestly. I think it's better than Museum Nightwatch. So we can certainly cut that. Um, we, and then I can just try to figure out what my last... I mean, it's, uh, Crowd Control Warden is probably better than Vengeful Creeper here. It's just a much bigger creature. But I actually have three cuts I need to make out of this deck. I didn't think I, need, I was going to be in that position. But hey, it's a, it's a good problem to have, not a bad one. Um, I think I want nine planes just because I have the novice inspector and then uh, granite witness is double white to flip up as well. I know I have double nervous gardener, but in this deck, it's not a high priority to be able to flip that on turn three. Let's take a look at our beautiful, beautiful mana curve and take a look at our spells. And yeah, no, this is, this is a nice streamlined green, white deck. I like it. I love it even. Man, this is really difficult. I haven't had to make a cut this hard in a while. I do feel like I really want to curve out. Yeah, I think amongst the threes, Vengeful Creeper probably is the worst, which is, I like I said, I love this card. But I think specifically in green, part of what makes Vengeful Creeper so good is the fact that you can just play this turn five as a five drop, right? But I have redundancy there in Crowd Control Warden, and this thing is just much bigger. So I think I can take the cut the Creeper. I like the fact that these generate tokens, so I like the Dog Walker here. I also like the Granite Witness in this instance because I have the Sumala Sentry. 
Um, I, I like that this gives me at least one additional evasive creature, uh, makes the games a little more dynamic, and having cheap things to flip over to the sentry is very, very nice. So uh, specifically, the double Nervous Gardener, Dog Walker, and Granite Witness are all very good with the sentry, whereas the Green Belt Radical, not as much. But of course, this card's a bomb, so uh, we're not going to be passing that. Uh, maybe we can shave like one Crowd Control Ward in here. I don't think I ever want to cut twos in general. Um, it's possible we can also maybe shave on the job just because we have, you know, three things that pump our creatures already. We have a Green Belt Radical uh, that also pumps our creatures. So I think I can probably shave on one Crowd Control Warden here. It's still, at the end of the day, a face down creature that costs five mana to flip over. And there's only so many of these cards you can play. And now that... That brings us back down to one card. One card that we need to cut out of this. Yeah, you know, I'm just going to cut this on the job here. I think Fuss Bother is just a better on the job in a lot of instances, and I don't want too many of that. And I do want to keep my creature count pretty high. And I still have three combat tricks and three removal spells, and then some other ways to affect combat. So let's try that. Not super confident on that one. It, on the job might be a card that I need. We only have the inside source, really, as a way to make a bunch of tokens. So, I think it's cuttable. Okay. On the play here, we will keep this. Turn 2 Permanent Enforcer into turn 3 Inside Source. Yeah, let me know what you think. I, I, I believe if I were to make a cut, it would either be on the job or just cut one of the three Crowd Control Wardens. And it's possible I just cut a Crowd Control Warden there. Uh, I'm currently on 6 spells, 17 creatures. I do want my creature count to be very high in this deck. All right, there's the Aftermath Analyst. What? <laughs> they mill the planes and an island, goodness. Okay. All right. So we have double Nervous Gardener, Crowd Control Warden with Bite Down on Crime. The Analyst doing a really good job of blocking here. Uh, really need to find at least one, just one forest to unlock my Nervous Gardeners, but I can't mulligan this. I have turn two Perimeter Enforcer into turn three Inside Source, right? So our opponent's just playing uh, 1-3's dot deck. I'm going to go ahead and play a Nervous Gardener face down. Just missing a land drop here is so, so bad, though. It's so horrendously bad. Meanwhile, our opponent's going to be able to use Aftermath Analyst to get two lands back here if possible. That's a Curious Cadaver from the opponent. Oh, we drew a Forest, which is quite nice. Um, the question is whether or not I want to trade Perimeter Enforcer for the Curious Cadaver. Doesn't seem bad. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Trade my 2-drop for their 4-drop. I know they probably have a way to make a clue. It just still seems very good for us to do this. I'm going to play a face-down Crowd Control Warden here. Because next turn I can flip this up and do lots and lots of damage. We're going to go ahead and get a Forest here with the Nervous Gardener. And then just, uh... Potentially get in for a really big attack. <laughs> so when he's on the job, would be good here. Or maybe it's cut eavesdropper. I just feel like I've... I think if you have this card, you probably just never cut eavesdropper, right? We don't even have a lot of fours. I guess I'm a kind of always of the mindset of if it's close, I just lean towards playing more creatures. It's kind of where I'm at. All right. I always want to beat these types of decks when they just have like an abomination of a mana base. I just want to be able to just... Just completely stomp them when I can. Um, but I don't know that I'll be able to because I missed the step. If I hit land number four that previous turn, I think that would have changed things. But as is, I don't, I don't think we can. So this is going to be a 7-7. Seven, seven. The other creatures can't really attack. So let's go ahead and attack with our face down card. Then I think I'm probably going to go with Granite Witness if they don't block. I don't think I'm going to flip this up. I think it's just too big of a blowout if they have a removal spell. So I'm going to play the Granite Witness because that continues to allow me to add pressure to the board here. By, you know, tapping down the Steam Core Scholar and having a nice flyer in play. I'm at 24 life though. I wonder if I should just be taking this and leaving this as a difficult to kill creature. Or if I just want to... No. Oh. All right, our opponent played a Zoni. 
We're starting things off on hard mode here, I guess. Nice card, friend. We're going to kill the Azoni, but they're still going to have these two Menace Reach creatures in play, which kind of ruins my entire Grana Witness plan here. Um, which creature am I, like, okay throwing away? Could be Inside Source. Like, trading Inside Source for one thing is probably... Oh, no, it can't... Inside Source can't kill the Azoni. I guess the Nervous Gardener trading for anything is not too bad. So let's just do that. I, the thing is, I want to just put things into my graveyard here. I want to put things into my graveyard um, just so that I can collect evidence later. So, I mean, I'll trade this for something. Literally anything. All right. But they got to trade, you know, Izoni for Bite Down on Crime, Nervous Gardener, and they have a 201 Spider to show for it. So, hell of a magic card. Hell of a magic card. Evidence Examiner, okay. Yeah, they're at too high of a life total here. I think we're probably just going to die. But Izoni will do that because I think Izoni just gave them enough of a cushion here where they're just going to um, basically outcard us. I mean, the thing is, these crowd control wardens can be awesome. Like, maybe, maybe that's kind of the route that we need to take. I'm going to... Um, Save the makeshift binding probably for the curious cadaver. I think that card can be really annoying and problematic. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy eating whatever. All right, here we go. I have a 7-7. Seven, seven. And we can play another 7-7. Seven, seven. That's, that's the plan here. But I imagine they're going to have some removal spells. Nope, just a ramp spell. Okay. So evidence, examining de evidence Examiner definitely getting them a lot of value. I just don't think I'm in a position to kill the Evidence Examiner. They still have a bunch of cards in hand. I feel like I need to save this Makeshift Binding for a poten another potential bomb. They, they're they playing all the colors, like literally all of them. And so... Like, my game plan is just to attack with my gigantic creatures and hope for the best. I'm going to attack here. I just don't think they're in a position here to um, to have like great blocks with against a green white deck with six open mana. So I think they're just going to go with the chump block here. I'm actually happy that they blocked with the reach creature here. But I think I guess that was the only creature they could block with. And then now we have the choice of either playing a face up crowd control warden or just playing two face down cards. Uh, I'm going to go with um, two face down cards here. I can flip both of them up next turn actually. It also just makes it more difficult for our opponents to figure out how they should be blocking. And uh, it also makes it so that the crowd control warden will be bigger next turn. I mean, they have a sweet deck, I suppose. They're going to play something big. There it is. Are they going to attack with three things? No, just the Aurelia. Well, I'm glad I saved the uh, makeshift binding. So we're going to use that there. Actually, I, I wonder if it's better to just like attack with these two creatures and see what they do. That just gets in for so much damage. Alternative, alternatively, I can binding and attack, which is also pretty good. Got to think about this one here. They have three mana available. No, binding and attack feels, feels correct. How bad is Aurelia here though? The thing is they might actually just block with the Aurelia because they're so ahead on cards. So yeah, let's go with the binding. Let's get Aurelia. And I'm actually okay trading off my Granite Witness for the Steam Core Scholar here. The reason being is that just puts less blockers in play for my crowd control wardens, right? And that's going to be my main route to victory. I'm not, I'm not really going to have a great removal spell here for the Scholar anyways. Now they can have a combat trick. That's a thing. But let's run everything out here and beat our opponent down. Okay, this is looking not bad, actually. Unless they have a sweeper. We, we, we have dispatched Aurelia and Izoni. Okay, 
We ha we have fought. Are you kidding me? Oh, they didn't have evidence to collect. Okay, okay, that is unreal, though. Come on, Re really? Like, I you just got to hit them with the really, right? That's unbelievable. I'm gonna use this to get a land because I don't have a land drop for the turn. Then I'm gonna crack a clue to give this vigilance. And I am sending the clowns. Th th this is gonna be our, our climb to rank one, by the way. We have to beat the double Izoni Aurelia monstrosity of a deck. I mean, do what I gotta do, right? Do what I gotta do. How are they gonna block? Okay, those are reasonable blocks. Flipping this up. What you got? They have to have something. Oh, it's a slice. Okay, and they didn't slice the eavesdropper. So Izoni dies. All right, so we have two lethal attackers. They have evidence examiner. They don't have blue mana now to cast the curious cadaver. So they have two, two other cards in hand. And we have a 7-7 seven, seven and a 9-9 nine, nine crowd control warden. Hashtag team crowd. That's a third is a... <laughs> God. Our opponent has three Izonis. That's not even real life. That is not real life. That is so stupid. That is so unbelievably dumb. Oh my gosh. What am I supposed to do? You tell me. I have never played against three Izonis. That is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Oh my goodness. All right. Two, three... We have eight mana. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we can do all the things here. Uh, I'm going to attack with my two large creatures, I guess. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, I mean, they blocked everything. And we had some nice draws here. All right, we'll see. I mean, look, if they play, if they play the black sweeper, then I don't know. I'm just gonna go for a walk. It's raining outside. It's raining outside pretty bad, I think. But I'm still gonna go for a walk. Like, what the actual heck? One, two, three. Count it. Three Azonis and an Aurelia has been cast this game. What? What a way to start this draft. That's all I'm going to say. What a way to start this draft. Holy cow. <laughs> they have like three rare lands too. How, how did you get so many rares? We got, we got a gem drafter in the house. We got three rare lands, three Azonis and an Aurelia. Oh, look at this. This is, the, this is the worst card that they've cast. Topiary Panther. All right, there might be a bite down on crime here, maybe. On crowd control ward. Oh, we beat it! We beat it! Not one, not two, three Azonis. Granted, the second one didn't even make spiders. Oh my gosh. I mean, we're, we're just like doing things we've never done before and this time i mean we just beat three azonis i gotta put i gotta screenshot this and then like put a picture of it on my wall that was unbelievable okay on the draw here turn to perimeter enforcer we got the granite witness that we can flip up um that would give this plus one plus one which is nice so air force one. Oh, turn two red herring is definitely nice uh, especially on the play, but given that we're on the, um, given that we have at, at least kind of one of the best two drops we can play outside of maybe Season Consultant, um, we have the Perimeter Enforcer, which does help us race just a little bit. Ooh, and they missed the land. They missed a land. I could play Season Consultant here, but I'm going to play Granite Witness, just a better use of my mana. If they had a shock, I imagine they would have shocked the Perimeter Enforcer. All right, they're cracking their red herring. This is all just everything that I want to see. Everything that I want to see. 
So the Rakdos is a face down card, okay. Um Huh. I'm just gonna play Season Consultant. It's almost as good as Locks It on Eavesdropper here. And my and then I'm just going to flip this up. Whatever, it doesn't, I don't care. All right, boom, six in the air. There are 13, we're at 20. We have get a leg up, bite down on crime here. We can at attack with the season consultant. So um, yeah, I mean, unless they actually use a removal spell this turn, things are gonna be very, very tough for them. They have one black mana. I mean, I don't see... Yeah, there's nothing really worth biting down on here. So let's just play another detective. And the Season Consultant, either they have a Toxin Analysis or they have to two for one. So let's go with that. Looks like it's a Toxin Analysis. Oh no, it's a two for one. I'm going to save Get a Leg Up here. That's a trade I'm more than happy to take. Because it's pretty bad if they do have Toxin Analysis. Although, I guess if they did... Okay, it doesn't matter. I mean, we have Bite Down on Crime plus get a leg up here to follow up whatever they have. And, uh, okay. That one was one of those free wins. We've given our fair share of free wins as well. It goes back and forth. All right, let's keep it going. 2-0, and still rank 2. How far or how close away are we? How close are we? We'll see. We shall see. We are on the play. We have... Neighborhood Guardian, this is a mulligan. I don't have too many follow-ups after the Neighborhood Guardian. If I, if, if I had like a forest maybe, but yeah, this hand just doesn't do enough in my opinion. Uh, replace the fuss bother with a forest then I definitely keep. But I just don't think that hand has enough to win. And now we have this hand. This hand's interesting. Um, it's, the question, like I like the bite down on crime. It's whether or not we keep uh, Crowd Control Warden or the Loxodon on Eavesdropper. If I don't draw a land, the Crowd Control Warden's better. I mean, Crowd Control Warden might still just be better in general. Although I am interested in just the, uh, curving, curving with curving this out. Just seems a lot smoother. You know what? I'm just gonna cut the. Um, we have three Crowd Control Wardens in our deck. We're already down a card. This gets us the card back. So I think I want to do this. It's a more powerful turn four play. Aftermath Analyst. Okay. And I do think I prefer Inside Source to the Crowd Control Warden. Besides, the Loxodon Eavesdropper is just going to find us the other card, right? That's what's going to happen. Oh, gosh. I know they missed a land drop, but if they countered my creature, like, it would still have been pretty bad for us. They might bounce my... They might bounce something for Tempo. They're bouncing my clue. Oh, are we just gonna play against unbeatable bombs every 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 game? Is is this is this the world that we live in right now? Is that what's happening? Man, that's super unfortunate. All right, well, I mean, it is what it is. What are these decks that we're playing against every time? They're double splashing the Ezrim here too. Ezrim, Cryptic Coat. We're just going to have a list of things that we beat. I mean, I don't think we're going to beat this opponent because they've now hit their land drops and they have five spells in hand and we don't have enough offense. Um, but And they have active Cryptic Coat. Like, Why can't we open nice things? I just want to have nice things in my life. Sadness. This feels like a nervous gardener probably. Oh, man. Brutal. I'm going to save my bite down on crime because I think it's Nervous Gardener. Gardener. I'd rather just run out the uh, Market Watch Phantom. I guess I could bite down the Aftermath Analyst. Is that worth? Um,
Look, I'm not winning the long game with them, right? I am not winning the long game with them. So I just need to do everything I can to squeeze in as much damage as I can and use my mana every single turn. That's basically kind of where I'm at right now. And it's interesting that they blocked the inside source over the 2-2 here. But it, 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 it did end up being better for them just because I have another detective here. But we're out of gas, right? This is all we have. So you play something big. I'm going to need to keep rattling off a bunch of creatures to get back into this. How do they have so many more cards than we do? Okay, we need a kill spell for this. Oh, do they also have hard-hitting crime or whatever? Hard-hitting question, rather. Yeah. Yeah, this one's lost. Oh, well. I mean, they had a fantastic blue-green deck. And we just kind of ran, ran out of gas a little bit. All great, great cards, along with the Cryptic Coat. We need to draw something awesome here. We'll see what they do. The question is, do I go with the bother? I think I do. It gives my Market Watch Phantom flying. And then I guess we can look for Greenbelt Radical or something. I don't think Neighborhood Guardian's good enough at this stage in the game. And I don't think I'm going to attack my 2-2 into their face down card. With that much mana open, I'd rather just attack in the air and uh, wait till I draw some kind of a like a mass pump spell. Like, uh, well, I guess we use the Fuss Bother. Um, like the Greenbelt Radical. That would be nice. Now they probably have to keep the Cold Case Cracker back. And if we can draw something like a Get a Leg Up, I mean, Greenbelt Radical is definitely a card I'm looking for. Fanatical Strength, Makeshift Binding. Cards of that nature. I, Crowd Control Warden also would not be terrible. It would be a 8-8. Eight, eight. That's wild. So this must be like... Um, they must have like Out Cold or something. Oh, what a draw. Yep, it's a Granite Witness. I mean, I feel like I still just need to use this Fanatical Strength. And just like push through as much damage as I can. And kill whatever I can. All right. They are at six life. We have three Thopters and a 2 2. We're at 14. They have Cryptic Coat and all gas in hand. We are trying our best to get in for as much damage as we can. That Fanatical Strength was one step in the right direction, but we, like I said, need to continue drawing fantastic cards. They just play Buried in the Garden, though. Wow, their deck is really good. Buried in the Garden targeting a Thopter. Probably into Cryptic Coat, and then they have the mana to bounce it as well. They're probably not attacking this turn. I would love to find a removal spell for the Cracker. Perhaps I should have saved the Bite Down on Crime on the Cracker, I don't know. This attack, I think, would be pretty reckless if they did choose to attack. Oh my gosh, we found a removal spell. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Let's attack with our flyers. So the reason why I'm doing this is um, I want to keep this extra 2-2 in play because I have get a leg up, right? And with get a leg up, by having three creatures, if I top that get a leg up and they don't play a flyer, then that's a, a lethal creature, even through a creature with reach, perhaps. So now they can make two disguise creatures here if they wanted to. They can bounce it and then replay it and then bounce it again. So I'm all in on these flyers. The fact that we drew the makeshift binding was huge. Yep, that's their plan. Good thing we're at 16 life though. 
So liking that. One more, one more timely top deck, and we obviously need them to whiff on ways to deal with our flyers as well. I'll take it. Combat trick. Oh, they just main phased it? Okay, that's a crowd control warden. Okay. There are two. Come on. There are two here. Cryptic Coat. Oh my gosh, if we can win this one. It's, it's tough. It's going to be tough. Okay, they're bouncing. That's a good sign. Okay, they have two mana. As long as they don't hit Granite Witness, I think these Thothers might get there for us. Yes! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! What were those top decks? What were those top decks? Fanatical Strength into Makeshift Binding. No, it was... It was... Make three Thopters into Makeshift Binding into Fanatical Strength. Oh my goodness. I cannot... We All right. Cryptic Coat, Ezrim deck down. Triple Azoni deck down. 3-0. This is our fate. It is meant to be. Let's go for rank one. All right, opponent on the play, but our hand is great. Turn one novice inspector into market watch phantom crowd control warden. Love, love this start. <laughs> I just, uh, by the way, I just, uh, I just messaged Marshall and Luis. And I told him what I did with the uh, triple uh, Izoni opponent. And he was like, come on, man. Nobody's going to believe you. <laughs> Good thing it's on YouTube. Good thing it's on YouTube. All right. They went turn two main phase deduce. Interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and give our market watch phantom wings. This crowd control warden looking very nice. I wonder if I'm supposed to be using get a leg up here and just attack with my face down card if I just wait. Wait, they're keeping up four mana? Oof, that's interesting. Maybe it's an out cold? Oh, it could be like a fairy snoop, I guess. Sure. Do I want to kill this creature? I do. I think it's just a good spot to use a piece of mana to make them just not have a 1-4 in play. They're clearly playing something defensive. And next turn, like, what do, we do, what do they do to my two crowd control wardens, right? They're just in a really, really tough spot. And this is going to allow me to get in some damage here with this, even, even with this Market Watch Phantom, potentially. If they play something large, okay. Face down card is okay. Bubble Smuggler is also okay. Actually kind of interesting what to do here, right? I can either just do the safe thing and attack, but I feel like I'm, it's in my best interest to just flip over something big. Honestly, I'm okay just trading Market Watch Phantom with something because I think there's also a chance they block both my face down cards. Um, and if they do that, then I lose one of my crowd control wardens and I kind of actually don't want that to happen. They might go bubble smuggler in front of market watch phantom. And then if they do, then I, I mean, I have a couple of options. Uh, honestly, it might just be better here to, um, play my consultant and granite witness. I think I like that actually. This all obviously like runs into like sweepers or whatever, but just makes it a lot more difficult to play around. Yeah, I'm not I'm not entirely sure on the get a leg up there, but bite down on crime. Nope. I'm a, I'm okay throwing the novice inspector away here just to get in for a lot of damage. 
three. So they're going to be eight, eights, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. It's not lethal. So I guess I just want to flip this one up and see what they do. They could have an unauthorized exit. Oh, exit specialist. Okay. And they want to minimize the damage that they take. Okay. Mistway spy. Sure. Now they still have to deal with this eight, eight that's in play. And we still have Season Consultant, and we still have Bite Down on Crime here. All right, Dramatic Accusation on Crowd Control Warden is good. We still have this clue as well. Ooh, Dog Walker. That's also incredible. Let's attack. Yeah, I'm just going to go Dog Walker here and flip it up. And next turn, that means this Crowd Control Warden will also represent a lethal attack. Deduce, go ahead, deduce away. I feel like this is a no witnesses or bust kind of situation. I suppose they could have also uh, played Ezrim. Let's play Dog Walker. Let's flip over Dog Walker here in response. Uh, permanent your opponents can, can't be turned face up during your. So I can turn it up during my turn. Do I even need to use this bite down on crime? I mean, it can go for lethal, but they have two mana available. So I'm worried about a bounce spell. Uh, oh, I can target the crowd control warden. Right? And then if they have a bounce spell, it's still okay. That plays around bounce spell. I can also target like novice inspector. Hmm. But then I can't flip over my crowd control warden. It's kind of interesting. No, let's, 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 let's do what I talked about. It's kind of weird, but this allows me to play around Unauthorized Exit, which I feel like is the most likely card that they have. And if they have a bounce spell, like what are they bouncing? Dog Walker? Okay, so it was not on my watch, which actually is good because they would have been able to kill this. I could have targeted Novice Inspector. Maybe that would have been better. Um, I should probably crack this clue in case I find a combat trick. Nope. All right. So, uh, out cold doesn't do it. Okay. Just a really, really aggressive hit. They, they were just trying to play kind of an Azorius control game. And definitely one of those instances where I like to deuce, but you play too many of too many effects like that. Um, it, it certainly leaves the door open to get run over. All right, we're gonna keep this hand. Not insane, but you know, three forests, nervous card. Ooh, lush portico would be great in our deck. Would love to draw a white source immediately so I can play turn two market watch phantom into all my other creatures. We're on the draw here again. They put Case of the Locked Hot House into the graveyard. I'm, I guess, happy about that. It does mean that they're probably light on lands. Turn two, Gravestone Strider. Um, I don't... I'm not going to play Nervous Gardener turn two. All right, Sample Collector from the opponent. Oh, there is our white source. Just a turn late. Could just like play this face up, but I don't think I want to. Oh, actually, maybe I do need to play it face up. This is, they're, 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 they have a reasonably aggressive start here. So, yeah, you know what? No, I, I, I take it back. I'm going to. I'm gonna just I I feel like I just want to play something big here with the with all the things that they have. I'm just gonna just every turn just face up something large, right? If they have an answer to this, I'm gonna play I'm gonna play a five five. What do they have? Chases on? Plus three, plus three and trample? I mean it's it's a clear combat trick. I guess we'll take it.
Let's see if they let's see let's see if they can attack through crowd control warden. Huh? You gonna attack me into crowd control warden? I'll block this time. This thing like blocks like any combat trick. Unless it's get a leg up. That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh I don't think now I think I can just uh, lean on this crowd control warden, so I think I can just play out my other creatures and then flip up the nervous gardener, get a planes, and we'll we'll chill for now. They're probably gonna. F oh, they didn't. They wow. They have all these all this color of mana, and they flip. They played nothing. Man, why is it just like literally everybody playing this card? Zirkovitz, what are you doing? You just you just mind control the entire world. All right, uh, let's play a novice inspector. How big is my creature? It's uh, six, one, uh, four, five, six, seven. It's a nine, nine. I just don't think this face up, this face. I don't know that this face down creature is anything, but we'll see. They do have a Sumala sentry, so maybe I just shouldn't be attacking. Yeah, maybe I should have just attacked with my two big creatures. What a block! What a block, okay? It's uh, something like that. Yeah, I actually don't like my Market Watch Phantom Attack. I don't know what this face down card is. They could have flipped that up in a previous turn, though. So unless it's like Exit Specialist or something, I just... I feel like they would have flipped it up. So I think it's more likely that they're going to use a combat trick this turn. But I could be wrong. But despite that, I just shouldn't have attack with the Phantom because they just have a free block there anyways. I don't know. Yep. All right, so it was Auspicious Arrival. We got Vengeful Creeper, which isn't bad. We still have Fuss Bother, which I can use next turn. And now they have a pretty bad board, so I think I can just swing with everything now. And uh, see what happens. Although, uh, Sumala Sentry always just makes things kind of scary, for sure. I think that's better than making three Thopters, right? They have four, they're at 14 life, though. I'm just going to go for it here. No fear. I feel like we're slightly ahead. Let's push it. I, I, I just, I don't think it can go that badly for us, given that we have this fuss bother. They have, a, they, they have to consider a lot of different possibilities here. And Fuss Bother is just one of them. Like, they're probably going to try to play around on the job. But that's going to be very difficult. And even if they flip over the Space Down card and turn the Sumala Sentry into a 2-4, the Market Watch Phantom does may, uh, ensure that... Um, sorry, the Fuss Bother will turn this into a 3-3, three, three, so it'll survive. Okay. Wait, why is it blocked? Why is, what are, what's this? Oh, triple block. Okay. I don't know what this face down card is. Do I want to kill that or a Gravestone Strider? I'm going to kill the Gravestone Strider. This thing probably can be flipped up to be something. If not, then I'm okay. All right. Oh, no. Did they have another? Uh, I should have targeted a... F I f yeah. Yeah. Well, at least the... Sum like, everything else still dies. It's still fine. But if I targeted the face down card... I forgot about the possibility of, like, another combat trick, I guess. But I think we're still okay there. That, that was a pretty good exchange. What the hell? <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. What the actual hell? Oh my gosh. All right. That's an Izoni. That is an Izoni.
How do, how do the blocks happen here? Izoni blocks here. Izoni eat gets to eat something, but so do my face down cards. <sighs> do I just attack with my face down cards? No, I'm just going to attack with everything. And wherever the chips fall, they fall. You know what I mean? Would have been really nice to be able to find like one more relevant threat to play this turn. That would have helped out immensely. We went land land there. So we have 10, 10 mana sources. Still almost winning this game through the Azoni. Um, the big boo-boo. Oh, they can just flip this up. What am I doing? Yeah. Oh, they drew a combat trick? Whatever. All right. That was, that was a frustrating loss. I I guess I should have just attacked with the crowd control wardens. Yeah. No, I need to get my head back in. That was that was pretty I wanted to kill the so I didn't yeah, I didn't play around a combat trick, which whatever. I just like there's no reason not to kill the face down card anyways. So I should have just gone for that. And then they would have had to use fanatical strength to kill my creature still. They would do less damage. I mean, I don't think we're beating Fuss Bother from that point with the Azoni in play anyways, right? Like, they attack me with Azoni and then make three tokens, and I just can't kill them. Ugh. All right. It's okay. We have a very solid deck. We're, we're like, we're doing a really good job of just, like, tr trying to overpower what our opponents are doing with commons. Okay? So we have to think about it that way. But I, I, I'm going to have to look back at that one. Not throw in Novice Inspector, sure. Uh, but definitely didn't feel like I didn't necessarily play my best there. So detilt and keep it going. All right, two mana pass. Uh, is it dog walker or is it nervous gardener? Probably just Dog Walker, not given that I drew that forest there. Just allows me to set up the Season Consultant a little bit better. And if they play a face down creature that... Well, actually, I do have Fanatical Strength. So that makes things interesting. Do I attack with the Season Consultant as well? See if they go for a double block? Because I'm not blocking, right? If they go for a double block, then the Fanatical Strength blows them out. I don't think so, so I think I'll be able to sneak in. And they can go for a single block, which is fine. Honestly, there's a non-zero chance they just take everything. And let me think here. I don't actually think I need the land here. So what I'm going to do is actually flip this over just to get in for... I think it's more important right now for me to squeeze in every single point of damage that I can. And I'm just going to play this face up because like I said, I don't. I have five lands, right? So I'd rather just... I'd rather, instead of thinning out my deck, I'd rather get in for an extra point of damage given what I have because this is a pretty all-in aggressive hand with the Fanatical Strength and the Makeshift Binding. So if they play, for example, something like an Eavesdropper... We can just cast Makeshift Binding on it and then just attack. Oh, speaking of Eavesdropper. I know, like, the, the thing with the Dog Walker is, like, I know I have to keep it, uh, uh, expose it to Novice Inspector, but it is what it is. This could be uh, Night Watch, which would be kind of annoying, I guess. If it is, I think I let it happen and I just play the Eavesdropper. I suppose I could have done nothing. Now, if they the, here's a good thing though. If they like flinch and let's say they use a combat trick here, then we can combat trick them back, which is very nice. So, so let's say they use like a fanatical strength or um, something along those lines. But if it's the night watch, it's really annoying. All right, it was the worst possible. Um, we still got to get in for some damage, so. 
Hopefully this is still okay. Another face down card with two mana available. <sighs> okay. Um, let's crack this clue. And let's attack with eavesdropper. Curious how they're going to block now. Okay. This one, I'm not going to let my eavesdropper die like that. There we go. We'll trade combat tricks. That's fine. I want to face up crowd control warden anyways. Just a better use of my mana. They're going to pass. I am not going to attack into them this... I'm not going to attack into them this turn. I mean, this thing is ginormous. Although now that I drew the Novice Inspector, I kind of am getting kind of greedy here. I kind of want this to be as big as, as possible. But let's see. Uh, this being a 4... Five, I'm just going to play an 8-8. Eight, eight. Let's be real. They're going to flip up like a Rift Hellion or something. And then we can just makeshift binding it. Sure. Crocodile. As long as they don't have a way to kill this, because uh, a bite spell doesn't do it, it has to be buried in the garden, or uh, uh, it has to be buried in the garden or binding. Oh, I see. Oh, and then they have bite down on crime. No, they don't. Interesting. Okay. This is far more exciting. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, they do have five mana available. So I do need to be a little bit concerned. I'm going to play the Novice Inspector. Like, do they have an instant speed way to kill this? Like Archdruid's Charm or something? Should I play? Eh, maybe I just attack with this. Five mana up. Yeah. Once again, I'm just running out Nervous Gardener. They're at 7 life. So I am far more interested in just having a wide board. And next turn, I'm very likely to just attack with everything. If I was splashing something or I needed more land, sure. But 6 is more than we need. And the extra point of damage can end up being very valuable here. And that's another victory. Okay. Back to our winning ways. 5 and 1. And I'm, not, I'm just going to say, Crowd Control Warden... I'm happy we're playing three of those. Could be, uh, could be four. Feels like that could be a little bit excessive, right? With three, you're pretty, you're pretty likely to have one. But just drawing too many of those might not be ideal. It's possible it's still just straight up better than something like a Granite Witness or, or whatever. What are my other face down cards? I don't even know. But I feel like all my face down cards are great. <sighs> all right, this is a great hand. Would have loved to go first. We have th three lands, Neighborhood Guardian, Season Consultant, Sumala Sentry. Can't complain. We'll go... I mean, it's always turn to Neighborhood Guardian. Oh, this is a... If I can draw a forest, this would be very nice for us. But we're on the draw against Boros, of course. And if they go Shock into another 2-drop, like I'll be sad... Okay, at least they didn't go shock into another two drop. So I am I'm less sad. I'm gonna play face down nervous gardener. Next turn we can go Sumala Sentry, flip up Nervous Gardener. That's gonna be a really good turn for us. Surprise! Now, if they attack me, what do I do? <laughs> All right, we're okay. They can't. They can't attack me. Uh, 
Okay, so Haas the Vigilante is massive. So I think I want to just play out a crowd control ward in here. Just to keep keep pace with what they have. I know I would like to get this extra value here. But I also don't want to get run over. And by having this in play, even if they kill this somehow, I can double block the Vigilante. Like, I don't want them to snowball the board with the Vigilante, right? Ugh. So attack with everything is saying that they're representing um, on the job. They are representing on the job. So how do we want to do this? We're at 16. It could oh, it could also be a fender at large, I suppose. Let me let me let me let me put on my thinking cap here. I can block Market Watch Phantom with Crowd Control Warden. That seems pretty decent. And just take the rest. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. They could have the chases on. Five, six, seven, eleven. All right. Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I guess I'm not too upset with that, to be honest. Oh, bite down on crime, and they have one red available, and we can collect evidence on it. Yes, please. All right, that was like the best possible situation. <laughs> All right, not feeling as bad now. We have now the incredible board and they just have a concealed weapon. So feeling pretty good about this. I assume they're gonna like equip here to like prevent some damage maybe. Otherwise they just die. Oh, and they have another creature, okay. I mean, we're at 12. I'm just, I'm just sending in the clowns here. And then we can go consultant Greenbelt Radical. Face down, probably. Oh. Yeah, this is actually interesting, though. It's like... Definitely playing this. And it's just like, which of these two cards do I play? They're both very good. The thing is, if I just draw a land, it's just over. So if they play another creature here, and I play the eavesdropper, they can block two three power creatures and still die. And this is not a guaranteed three power creature, so I guess I'll just play the eavesdropper. Like, they need to play two creatures this turn. Okay. If they block and kill something, we're also fine. If they have specifically Lightning Helix, all right. Six and one. Six and one, Ugh, still rank two. Every time now, it's just so close, right? Every time we're just like, can we get there? Can we get there? Six and one, green, white beats, mostly commons. Mostly commons. I know we could have been blue. I think just any combination of those would have been nice. That I will, I will say the blue green might have been sweeter, but I am not complaining about my deck. Okay, on the play. What did I say? 90% chance they're on a busted Boros deck. We're on the play. I'm going to keep this because... I mean, I would like a Plains, but... We have nine Plains in our deck. We also have this Nervous Gardener to help fetch us the White Source, and we're on the play. Oh, they're not red-white. Great. Okay. Anyways, I'm going to play this on turn three. I, I do want to use it to get a White Source. Fugitive Codebreaker. Uh-oh. That's aggressive. White source? Nope. Oh, they are red white. I told you. This counts. Yeah, of course. I thought about playing it next turn, to be honest, but I wanted to be able to get a white source and then play like perimeter enforcer to try to race them. It's not that bad. Like I said, we have nine white sources in our deck with double Nervous Gardener. If they just kill the face down card, we still have Eavesdropper here. 
Okay, sh sh fine. Okay. I hope you shock this. Wisp. You know, this is just like not, this is not reasonable. You can't just, you're, you're not allowed to do this. <sighs> All right, trying to get back some tempo there. Sorry, I didn't say anything for a while. Yeah, this is not reasonable. Whisk drinker vampire. Hope I hope they attack me. Please attack me. Please attack me. Let's go. You want to rumble? Let's rumble. I'm not feeling good about this rumble, by the way. I'm just talking myself up here. <laughs> Probably like a dog walker or something. Hey, yeah, good job. Good job. The, uh, the, the Rakdos Splash Double Whisk Drinker Vampire dot deck. That's a thing, I guess. Wow, they drained us for six that turn. How silly is that? We can hope they just don't play a creature. I don't think that's going to get it done for us. If I play a Neighborhood Guardian plus Season Consultant, it puts me up to... Yeah, no. I, I need to keep this Perimeter Enforcer on defense, unfortunately. And I'm going to keep up Fanatical Strength. It is what it is. If they play two creatures, they play two creatures and we die. But I'm going to... My, my best bet is Fanatical Strength here. They're at 19 life. Okay. Yeah. All right. They just can't keep getting away with it. It's fine. I mean, they played all good cards. We, we, had, we had a fine start, but they were able to... It's like... They had a good start and it was better than ours. And our green-white deck obviously doesn't have a lot of removal. And they played well. Like, if they played their, if they attacked their Wisp Drinker Vampire into my Perimeter Enforcer when I kept up the green mana, like, we would have been in a much, we would have been in a really good spot, right? But they didn't. And they drained me out with the double Wisp Drinker Vampire. So, well-played opponent. Not much I can say other than that. So, this was a four-land hand. We definitely would, but it's got turn one Novice Inspector into turn two Samala Sentry. So, any face down card here in those last two draw steps would be great. We can obviously crack a clue, but that's not something that I really want to do here. And we did find a face down card. So we found a dog walker here, which is incredible. Very happy about that. They have a great two drop there in the Leering Onlooker. I'm hoping they, if they have a removal spell, I'm hoping they kill my Sumala Sentry and not my face down card. It's pretty hard to kill the face down card unless they have Slice from the Shadows, which they of course do. Hmm. I don't want to use Bite Down on that. Let's play Perimeter Enforcer. Need to get the Sumala Sentry going. God, Slice from the Shadows, ugh. Man, we've been playing against such absurd decks. Like, how many just Golgar- Like, they for sure have Izoni. You know what I mean? They for sure have Izoni. It's just like not even a question that they have Izoni. Hide and Plate Sight, best green rare in the set. Honestly, you know, at the end of the day, this deck didn't have any crazy bombs. So going six wins is really not that bad. If that's what ends up happening. All right, this looks like 
This one on the right is a Nervous Gardener, most likely. I think kind of our plan here is to just try to win with our Flyers. I didn't want to use the Bite Down on Crime that turn, though. But the thing is, with the Leering Onlooker, like, they can just make two 1-1s one after that, right? That's right. Play your Nervous Gardener. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, this is bad. They're not splashing shock. All right, extra land here, not ideal. We just need a bunch of crowd control wardens. <laughs> that's, that's always the plan here. Just a bunch of crowd control wardens. Ay, ay, ay. All right, is this a sweeper? Like, what is this attack? I'm at 28. I don't understand this attack. I guess I could have blocked this with the Sumala sentry. Yeah, okay. Well, um, not much we can do. I mean, I guess I should have. I should have blocked the nervous garden. I guess they have a trick. But our hand started out great, but. They had a much better hand, so it's just not much we can do. Like, I don't even know what sequence of draws can get us out of this. That's a start. I'm actually surprised that they exiled Leering Onlooker. But oh, we can't we still can't attack. They have three cards in hand. I mean, we can attack with, like, these three creatures. They're going to start flipping over these face-down cards. Sure hope this is an eventual creeper. Uh, crowd Control Warden flipped face-down, and then flipping it up with the sentry would be quite nice. I, these cards are just nothing, right? They're, they're just nothing burgers. Yeah. Okay, Rot Farm Mortipede. Okay. It's not great. But I'll attack. Gain some life. Alright, so they have this face down card, which I which also is nothing. Can confirm that it's nothing. Okay, I can't actually confirm it, but. Team Crowd Control Warden. Next turn, I can use Inside Source on the Perimeter Enforcer. I actually don't mind this trade. Um, actually, I'm still just going to block like that. Maybe I should be double blocking here. In case they have a removal spell. Maybe they would have used the removal spell already. <laughs> Can you? They might have like extract the confession. That doesn't do a whole lot here, though. All right, that's not good. All right, get that trade going. Okay. Uh, still need crowd control wardens at this point. The only nice thing is that we're at a pretty high life total, but the Topiary Panther is going to chunk us pretty well, along with the Rotfar Mortipede. So we're going to need to find something large very soon. Like, just no land number 10. Fanatical Strength. All right, we'll take that trade. Oh, man. Our crowd control warden keeps getting worse. Yep. Yeah, this crowd control warden is just not going to be good enough at this point. Oh, well. 
Yeah, I think uh, honestly, th- uh, I took like maybe two extra points of damage that I shouldn't have. Ugh, how how terrible is this on this board now? We're gonna pass. They probably have a removal spell here. I'm gonna block the Mortipede and use Fanatical Strength. And then hope to find something for the Panther. But this is mostly just kind of lack of uh, lack of good options. All right, we're at one. You know, who nice. I'll pump your Panther in response. All right. World Souls Rage from the opponent, and they got a land value. All right. Well. We went six and three. We're still going to end up here at rank two. A little bit of a, uh, an unfortunate finish after starting out six and one, but hey, uh, can't complain about a six win finish, to be honest, given our deck. I think our deck was completely fine. Um, we had some solid uncommons here with the Sumala Sentry and the Greenbelt Radical. The Crowd Control Wardens were our MVPs for sure. And this is just another example of a deck with a nice mana curve with basically all commons and uncommons. And we were still able to pick up six wins. And that's kind of the nice thing. I like to draft consistent decks because you're not always going to necessarily get those rares. Um, I, I'm looking at some of the good blue cards. There was like Lost in the Maze. I mean, I'm sure we could have had a decent deck there too. But if you can promise that I'm going to go six and three in every single draft. Yeah, I'll take that, obviously. So at the end of the day, still pretty happy with how we finished. Um, and we played against a lot of haymakers in this draft. We played against Cryptic Coat. We played against Hide in Plain Sight. We played against four Izonis and an Aurelia. We played against a lot of just ridiculous bombs, and we're able to come out on top in some of those instances. So overall, just pretty happy with kind of the performance of this deck. Uh, just ABC magic, right? Curve out, combat tricks with a little bit of removal, and that was good enough for a 6-3 and three finish. So... The climb continues. We are still rank number two, still going for rank number one here. But hey, if we go six and three every single time, we're going to get just one step closer to catching Eakin and trying to hit rank number one. If you've enjoyed this content, I did launch my Patreon channel. The link is in the description below. I do want to give a shout out to all the current patrons. I really do appreciate your support. And also, thank you for stopping by and watching this draft and following me. Uh, hopefully you've been watching a few episodes, so you've watched kind of the climb, or although right now we've been kind of stuck at rank number two, but there's still more days. I post these videos every single day. Hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you tomorrow.